What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of Review here on One Fair Review. I'm your host, as always, Grant, and today we're going to be looking at another great movie. Well, actually, no, I don't think the last one we watched was great, but this is uh, this one's great, at least. Uh, so then I can finally talk about it. Shin Godzilla. This movie came out in 2016 in Japan and also was later released around the world, places like Australia, China, South Korea, and of course, the United States. It had a budget of 15 million USD dollars and uh, made over 77 million dollars worldwide. Um, however, most of that money was made in Japan. The box office returns from Japan were seven billion seven hundred and fourteen million eight hundred and forty six thousand and eight hundred yen which uh, to dollars would be around 67 million let's say and it's not that exact number but it's around that number this is a movie i've been wanting to talk about for a long time I, i've talked about it briefly on the channel before um maybe that one time i <laughs> we made a godzilla uh video but uh, I have been meaning to talk about this, and I did mean to make a review about this back in 2016, but I never got around to it. I don't know why. I guess I just got lazy, but I really wanted to talk about it because this movie is phenomenal. Quite the opposite from Godzilla 2014, directed by Gareth Edwards. This movie, uh, the director, was uh, Hideki Anno. Now, some of you might know him. He was also actually the writer of the movie. He was the writer and director. Uh, some of you might know him, maybe you won't. Uh, Hideki Anno was actually the creator and writer of Neon Genesis Evangelion. Uh, so yeah, uh, people who are familiar with his work will know that he is a brilliant writer and director. So they got him to direct Shin Godzilla back in 20, I think it was 2014 or 2015 when they got him to direct it. They also got the special effects director to be uh, Shinji He, excuse me. Higachi, uh, who actually, for people who know Shinji Higachi, he actually did uh, the Gamera trilogy. He d was the director for the effects in the Gamera trilogy from the 90s. And he also recently did the Attack on Titan movies, the live action movies. So, um, yeah, he's getting some good work. Uh, but, yeah, he was also the special effects director for this movie. And uh, we'll get to that a little bit later. To talk about the story a little bit of Shin Godzilla, I don't want to give away too much, but pretty much what happens is uh, it's a pretty basic story when you just kind of summarize it. But basically, there's this creature that emerges in Tokyo Bay and starts and comes on land and destroys a part of Tokyo. Then it goes back inside the water and comes out and emerges into its next stage, uh, which is Shin Godzilla, of course. Now, the, that's not the actual stage name, but that's stage four when he becomes, when you see Godzilla, uh, that's stage four. And then he kind of becomes even stronger as the film goes along. Excuse me, I'm just moving my paper across the table. Um, that's the basic story, I guess I could say. Um, it, it obviously doesn't sound that interesting. But believe me when I say this movie is a lot more in-depth than I'm actually describing it. I, I've talked about it a little bit before about it being a political satire. And, um, and you know, some people don't know what I mean by that when I say it's a political satire. What I mean is that this movie was definitely not made as a popcorn flick. It was not made as this, uh, this just like, you know, kind of like 2014. It's just made as like, okay, it's another monster movie. We're going we're gonna to play up the monsters and everything. This movie was not made as that. Um, Hideki Anno actually had a, a very uh, a, a deep uh, passion for this project, and he actually wanted to uh, reflect uh, sort of uh, his complaints about the J the Japanese government uh, during the time, and well, modern day the Japanese government bureaucracy, all that kind of stuff. He was actually very inspired by um, this huge event that happened in 2011 to Japan. Uh, I'm not going to say exactly what it is, but for those of you who know what it is, you know that it was terrible. And he's more commenting on those kind of things, that the aspect of how the Japanese government um, kind of treats its uh, citizens and treats the country and treats problems. So he was inspired by that to make this movie and make it into a political satire. Shin Godzilla is mostly this ensemble cast uh, of people. Uh, and there's two reasons for this. The first one being so you can see the bureaucracy, the bureaucratic government in Japan is really being run by. 
and it just has so many faces and names and titles that all blend together. Most characters are just dull to highlight that and to accompany the message of the film that he's trying to get across. The second reason was to show that Japan was needed to unify and everybody from other countries as well had to work together in order to fix this this catastrophe that's happening in Japan. So uh, these were the two main reasons for this ensemble cast. And the reason I'm talking about this ensemble cast is because there's a ton of characters in this movie. And a lot of people say that the characters were boring. And the truth is, that is supposed to be the case. A lot of the side characters in this movie, you're not really supposed to know who they are or what their personality is. They are supposed to be dull characters. Like I said, his goal was to just really paint the picture of who is running Japan. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, just a bunch of faces, you know, just a bunch of names, a bunch of titles that really, at the end, don't really mean much. Because when they don't know how to solve the problem, that becomes an issue later on. One of the main characters by the name of Rando Yaguchi, uh, Yaguchi, uh, I'm pronouncing that wrong, by the way, but he's the deputy chief candidate of security of sec, the deputy chief candidate secretary of Japan. He has this he has this idea of how Godzilla should be defeated in the movie, and he has these ways that he's trying to tell you know the people in front of him during the meetings how they should do it. But nobody really listens to him because he's not a high rank, and because of this, throughout the movie, he gets more frustrated and more. Uh, determined, uh, a little bit uh, desperate uh, towards the end. It's really interesting to see how this plays out. There are five total characters in the movie that do stand out to me that are interesting characters and that really do have this personality to them, unlike 2014 where it's more generic and the characters, it's like, okay, you have the very stereotypical Hollywood uh, white family. You just have the bland white guy who's a Marine. You have the bland white girl who's a nurse. And you have the perfect son. And then that's it. Here, you don't have that. Like I said, you have Rando, who's the deputy chief uh, uh, secretary of Japan. You know, he's just he's just some guy, essentially. He's just some guy who gets frustrated because he has an idea, but nobody listens to him. You have his best friend, uh, who's also trying to help him, but really can't do much because he's not a high rank. Then you have Kyoko Ann Patterson, who is a part of the American government and whose dream is to be the U.S. president one day. You know, stuff like that. There are certain characters in this movie who I'm not going to talk about all of them, but who do have interesting personality traits, who do have interesting traits about them in general that really just make them memorable and really make them stand out among the dull cast, which is what their intention was. I find most of the characters in this movie to be really fascinating or really interesting, really fun, likable. Well, they're not necessarily fun, but they're enjoyable to watch, to see how how stressed out they are to deal with this situation. And like I and I'm going to say this right now, this movie isn't a fun movie to watch. It is a dark, depressing uh, movie to watch. I did say it's a political satire, which it is. It's not particularly funny. It has some funny moments in there, but again, this is a really kind of depressing, somber movie really uh really bitter so you you don't go into this really to have fun you go into it to just really um you go into it just to fear godzilla and this was the first time i saw a movie where i really feared godzilla but i'll I'll get to that in a little bit uh to just kind of sum up or to talk about the story a little bit more i have to say it's really unpredictable uh in a way it's unpredictable in the fact where you don't really know what's going to happen to the characters. You don't know if they're going to survive or not. Whereas I think his name was Ford Brody or I don't know what his name was, but uh, in the movie, you know, he's going to survive and he just kind of plays it straight the whole time. Whereas these characters, some of them, they're just worried. You, you just see the government of Japan. They're all like worried. They're all kind of scared shitless. They don't know what the fuck to do. They don't know what they're going to do with this situation. Because really nobody knows what to do. And it's really interesting to see how they kind of butt heads and how kind of what happens, what, how the movie continues, how they evolve throughout the movie. And believe me, it is you, – you never know what's going to happen to the characters. It, you know, you just don't know. It's very unpredictable that way. And I have to say I really like that about this movie. It wasn't predictable for me. And uh, there was a lot of things I just didn't see coming and – Fucking kudos. They, <laughs> I, I could not see uh, certain things coming with the characters, that is, and I didn't know the movie was going to end how it did. It was actually very creative. Another thing I have to mention about this movie that I absolutely love is the music. The, the, the soundtrack for this movie 
is absolutely incredible. One thing I complain about to this day is that music in movie or soundtracks in movies don't seem to get as much attention anymore and they don't seem to be memorable like how they were back in the day you know when you watch psycho it's like you remember that theme in your head the whole time you're just like whoa it gets you pumped or uh i guess a more early a newer example would be probably like pirates of the caribbean like something like that like memorable music or you know when you hear the themes of batman from 1989 it's like oh you get pumped when you hear that the Godzilla music has been time. It's almost timeless. It's been going on since 1954, originally co uh, composed by Akira Ifukube back in 1954. And they haven't used the exact same music in every single movie, but the general theme of Godzilla has been the same for over 60 years, 50, 60 years, uh, something like that. And it is really, really good. The composer for this movie was a man by the name of Shiro Sagisu. And uh, he used the works of Akira Ifukube, his original works, and just kind of revamped it for the film to make it more grand, to make it darker, bleaker. And then, of course, he added his original uh, tracks in it as well, which I do think are beautifully made. <laughs> There are some really haunting tracks in here and there's some haunting imagery and I have to say it's really well done. The composer did a great job using Akira Fukube's original music and uh, and I hope they continue that. I know a lot of people say it's cheap to use the same music. It's like, oh, why praise the music if it's the same thing? And to, to those people, I tell them to, to kindly fuck off. Um, when, a, when a song, when a theme is timeless, it's timeless. I don't think it should go away. You know, for instance, the Batman theme, why should we replace it? Just keep the same Batman theme, revamp it, do anything you want with it, but just keep it similar. When something is timeless, you keep it the same way because it's timeless. This, The Godzilla themes, they are timeless. They stood the test of time for 60 years, and I think they could stand the test of time for another 60 years as long as they don't get old. That's just my opinion, of course. You can have a different one, but I have heard that as a common complaint, and that really isn't fair. When there are original tracks in here, when it is revamped, when it is just beautiful to listen to. I just had to take a swig of my water right now. Excuse me. Another common complaint I've heard about this movie by uh, usually the American fan base uh, is uh, the running time and Godzilla. Um, the running time of this movie is exactly 120 minutes, which is roughly two hours. 
And Godzilla is in it for about eight to nine of those minutes. Um, and they compare that to 2014, where 2014 was pretty much the exact same thing, 120 minutes, uh, two hours, and then it had roughly eight to nine minutes of Godzilla. So people say, why did, why did we complain about 2014 when Shin Godzilla is exactly the same? Um, to those people, I also say to, to kindly fuck off as well. They don't really understand the difference between each movie. First off, it's not fair to compare the movies. They're totally different to begin with. And, uh, and also, one of them is better, so get over it. The story in Shin Godzilla, like I said, is a lot better than, than Godzilla 2014, and the characters are a lot more interesting and engaging. You know, the entire time I was watching the movie, the difference between 2014 and Shin Godzilla was that I was actually invested with the human story and what was going on. And then when the Godzilla stuff came up, it, it was it was even better. However, in 2014, it was more that I didn't care, I was bored, and then when Godzilla showed up, I was disappointed. So, <laughs> you can really, I could compare these two uh, all day, but that's not the point here. The point is that this movie is long. Uh, some of it can be seen as boring if you're not into it, or if, you, or if this isn't your kind of thing. Again, this is not supposed to be a fun movie, but... The Godzilla runtime in this movie doesn't affect me, or it doesn't bother me, because they use his time effectively, and the screen time that he's there is excellent. The special effects director, like I said, was uh, Shinji Higachi, who did the Gamera trilogy, and of course, you know, Attack on Titan, all that crap. He does an excellent job with the special effects in this movie. It's incredible what they were able to do. And I have to say, this movie is honestly a testament to how good CGI can be. It's really, really good. When I first saw the movie back in 2016, I thought what I was seeing on the screen was real, like a real rubber suit. Like I thought like, oh yeah, that's a guy in a rubber suit. And then only to later on watch the behind the scenes and see that it was mocap and it was CGI. I couldn't believe that. I honestly couldn't believe that. And maybe to some of you that might not make sense. But the thing is, Sometimes it's really it's really easy to, to de detect CGI. You know, most of the time CGI doesn't look real to me. The last movie I saw with extensive CGI, uh, I'm I'm really trying to think was uh, okay. The Meg. The Meg at times can look good, but even at its best, it looks fake. And uh, that goes for most movies, like say Avatar. Avatar looks good, but even at its best, it look it still looks fake. The thing is with CGI is if you can make a good CGI convinces you that something's real. To me, Shin Godzilla is as good as Jurassic Park with its special effects. Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park, excuse me. Uh, Jurassic Park has some great special effects that stand the test of time with the T-Rex scene. It looks amazing and it convinces me every time that it's CGI. And when I first watched it, I couldn't tell what was a uh, what was an animatronic and what was just CGI. Same thing with God, with Godzilla. I couldn't tell it was CGI for the longest time. There are certain scenes where it's like, where it's like, I thought to myself, okay, they needed to use CGI for this, but it still looks phenomenal. It looks amazing. Unfortunately, I won't be able to show you much of the movie because uh, Toho likes to copyright <laughs> videos all the time and take them down. So I won't be able to show you too much. Fuck, I probably won't even be able to show you any of the civilian scenes, but maybe I'll sneak something in there for you. But the special effects are absolutely amazing and really are a testament to how good this movie is. Hideki and Hideki Anno really did a great job crafting this movie with you know with his uh, with everybody else in it. Like the actors are fantastic, composer, the special effects director, the camera work is fantastic, beautifully done. And this movie, quite honestly, is a masterpiece. It is a masterpiece, a modern masterpiece both for Japanese cinema and just cinema in general, I believe this film to be absolutely amazing, not only with its special effects, not only with its storytelling, its characters, just everything about it blew me away when I first watched it. And I didn't have that many, I just hit my mic, I didn't even have that many, you know, high hopes or big, you know, I wasn't looking forward to this movie that much. I was like, oh, okay, you know, it could be good, but Godzilla looks a little bit weird. You know, I thought, like, oh, he, he doesn't look like the more sympathetic side. You, you lose the sympathetic side of Godzilla when you make him look more like a monster. And, uh, and, I, didn't, and uh, I didn't know that the movie would be this good. On top of that, I, I really have to say, with a budget of 15 million USD, 
they did a great job with the special effects, the casting, the acting, everything. This movie is amazing, and, and I, I can see why the Japanese uh, critics and Japanese public consider this movie to be a masterpiece. And uh, as for everybody else around the world, I have to say one thing <laughs> before I, uh, I give like my final kind of thoughts on this movie. I can get why people won't like this movie. I really do. Uh, to some people, it might be boring because they don't understand the message. They don't understand what's the importance of the characters. They might not understand a lot of cultural aspects of this movie, and they'll find it boring. Or maybe they will understand the cultural aspects, but they'll still find it boring. And you know what? That's okay. I really think that's okay because, I mean, I'm a person that's watched Citizen Kane multiple times in his lifetime. I think it's a masterpiece, yes, but I think it's fucking boring. I I'm not a fan of Citizen Kane. I'll, I'll recognize it as a masterpiece. But the thing is, is that I, what I want people to know is because I have seen people try to say that this movie sucks. I have seen people say that this movie is worse than um, Godzilla 2014, which I can't understand. And to those people, I have to say, like, you know, I don't get it. You know, I've seen comments of people say that, like, oh, this movie cannot be you cannot call this movie great. At, at best, it's decent. And no, that's not true. This movie isn't at best decent. At its best, this movie is a modern masterpiece of film. At its worst, it could be a little bit boring to people who don't understand. And the thing is, like I said, I get it. If most people won't like this movie, that's completely fine. That's their opinion. But the thing is, the problem I have is that people will go around saying that this movie sucks just because they didn't find it to be fun. They didn't, want, they didn't get the action. They didn't get another monster. So they say it sucks because of that. And that's really unfair. That is really unfair to say this movie's terrible. You can just say it's not your type of movie, in my opinion. I mean, again, to give another example, I'm not a fan of Gone with the Wind, but it is a great movie, I have to admit. It's very well made. Give me Casablanca any day of the week. Um, getting away from Casablanca, this movie is absolutely terrific, in my opinion. I find this movie to be very enjoyable to watch. And two years ago, when this movie came, ba came back, came out in 2016... I thought it was amazing, and I and I loved the movie, and I thought this could be one of my favorite movies of all time, but I said, I'll wait on it. Uh, I've waited for two years to, to really say that. I do believe that this movie is one of my favorite films of all time. It's really good, um, but I'm still going to wait a little bit longer to see if I really classify it as that or, or if it gets on my top 20 list, and um, I just have to say this movie really is just that good, In like I said. I might be overselling it to some people. Um, don't go into it expecting too much. But if based on what I've said, if that interests you at all, then I would say to check out this movie. My final thoughts on Shin Godzilla is this movie is a modern masterpiece in my opinion. It is a great, great example of a, a, Jap a, gr a good Japanese kaiju film to come out in recent memory and a good Godzilla film to come out. Um, I am excited to what they have more in store for Godzilla later on in the future, but I don't know how they're going to top this personally. I don't know what they're going to do. I hope they do. I hope this gets topped. I mean, that's what I always expect. Um, if I was to give this movie a final verdict, a solid 10 out of 10. I have no problems with this movie at all. I didn't find it boring like some others, uh, some others who don't understand it might. Um, I found it engaging. I was invested the whole time, and I was absolutely shocked with how good this movie was um all these years later my opinions haven't changed i still think the miniatures are amazingly done i think the mocap was expertly crafted uh special effects great music uh the music that was done for it was terrific acting solid a plus except for a few american <laughs> actors who were in the movie who clearly aren't the best but i can ignore that or I could just uh, brush it aside and be like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> okay, whatever. It's fine. I'm not going to give away too much. Of, obviously, I'm not going to give away too much more of the movie. Um, even the footage I'm going to show you is probably edited so down so then it doesn't give away anything. I hope not, <laughs> at least. Um, I really do recommend people watch this movie. Uh, give it a shot, even if it, you don't think you'll like it. Knowing what I've told you, maybe you might enjoy it a little bit more than you did the first time you watched it. So this is a definite recommendation for me. Uh, I think this is a great film. Um, thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you guys have already seen Shin Godzilla, please tell me what you guys thought. 
down uh, down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you already haven't. And uh, as always, have a nice day, and I'll see you next time on One Fair Review.